In this lesson, we're going to use a process called completing the square in order to write a quadratic function in vertex form. Let's begin by talking about what vertex form is. There are different forms of a quadratic function, standard form, which you see here, and vertex form, which you see here. These functions are equivalent. In fact, if you were to look at the graph, the graphs would be exactly the same, and if you were to put any inputs in, you would always get the same outputs. They are completely equivalent, despite the fact that the two functions look very different. They are different forms of the same function. Each of the forms has its benefits. Standard form, for example, we can tell that the quadratic function opens upward because we have a positive leading coefficient, and we can see that the y-intercept in this function is at 32, or at the point 0, 32. That's where the graph would cross through the y-axis. The vertex form, on the other hand, tells us about the shift of the function if we were to look at its graph. The x plus 6 tells me that the function shifted left 6 from the origin, the point 0, 0, and then down 4. So if we were to go to our coordinate plane and start at the origin, go left 6 and down 4, we'd find that we have our parabola. And because we shifted left 6 and down 4, we know that the coordinates of the vertex, or the turning point, are at the point negative 6, negative 4. Now before we begin talking about how to complete the square, there are two things we have to talk about. The first thing is about exponents. We know that 5 times 5 can be written as 5 squared, and we know that x times x can be written as x squared. Similarly, we know that x plus 6 times x plus 6 can be written as x plus 6 squared. This is particularly important because when we have a function written in vertex form, notice that we have a binomial squared. So let's keep this in the back of our minds. Now this phenomena, where I have two binomials that are the same, or the binomial squared, actually comes from something very cool. This comes from what is called a perfect square trinomial. And here are three examples of perfect square trinomials. When I factor each of these, something very cool happens. For example, if I were to factor x squared plus 10x plus 25, I would end up with x plus 5 times x plus 5, which is x plus 5 squared. And if I were to factor x squared plus 12x plus 36, I would end up with two binomials that were identical, x plus 6 times x plus 6, which is x plus 6 squared. And if I were to factor x squared minus 14x plus 49, I would end up with x minus 7 times x minus 7, which of course can be written as x minus 7 squared. Now it's no coincidence that these three trinomials ended up with binomials squared. In fact, there's a pattern within them, and maybe you see it or maybe you don't. Take a look at this. If I look at the first trinomial, if I take half of 10x, which is 5, and square it, I get 25. And in the second example, notice that the middle term, 12x, if I take half of 12x and square it, I get 36, because half of 12 is 6, and 6 squared is 36. And in the third trinomial, if I take half of the middle number, minus 14, half of that is negative 7, and I square it, I get 49. Notice that pattern, where the c term, or the number at the end, is half of the middle number squared. Whenever your term at the end is half of the middle number squared, you have a perfect square trinomial that will factor into two identical binomials that can be written, for instance, as x plus 5 squared, or x plus 6 squared, or x minus 7 squared. That's very, very useful in this process of completing the square. Now hold on to that thought for a moment. One other thought that I want you to think about is this. Suppose Jenny is celebrating her birthday. She is 14 years old. I could say that mathematically in a lot of weird ways. I could say that she is 14 plus 0 years old. Or I could say she is 14 plus 5 minus 5 years old. A very weird way to say it but 14 plus 5 minus 5 is really just 14. 
Or for Jenny's birthday, I could put on the cake 14 plus 8 minus 8. Or 14 plus 2 minus 2. Or 14 plus any number minus the same number, and her age is still 14. Hang on to that thought as well, and all of these things that we just talked about are going to come in very handy as we learn how to complete the square. Now, with all of this information in mind, we're ready to begin our first example. Write the function in vertex form by completing the square. Before we begin, a few words of advice and a few words of caution. First of all, this process is often difficult for students when they're first getting started. Please be patient with yourself and take your time. Work through the problems a step at a time. When you finish the first example, your head will probably be spinning. When you finish the second example, your head will probably still be spinning. That's okay, and that's perfectly normal. You should know that the more you do these, the better you'll get, and it's actually very useful. You'll use it a lot in algebra and a lot in geometry as well. All of the steps are listed out in your algebra handbook, so don't be afraid to consult that as you're working through these problems. It's an excellent resource. Let's work through the first example. Here's the function f of x equals x squared plus 6x minus 2. And now we're going to employ the process of completing the square in order to put the function in vertex form that will let us see the shift left, right, up, down. And here's how we do it. We begin by writing f of x. We're going to copy everything down from the original function with two exceptions. Here's what we're going to add in. x squared plus 6x, just like the original, plus a mystery box, minus 2, just like the original, minus the mystery box. Notice we have a plus a mystery box and a minus a mystery box. We are going to put some numbers in that box that will give us a special scenario. In fact, the scenario that we're hoping for is that we'll end up with a perfect square trinomial so that when we factor the first three terms, we end up with a binomial squared. Now, how do we decide the numbers to put into that box? I mean, we could put any numbers in the world, right? Plus 5, minus 5, plus 8, minus 8, plus 6, minus 6. But we have to put the right numbers in there so that things factor out how we want them to. Here's how we do it. We go to the middle term in the trinomial. We have x squared plus 6x plus box. We take half of the number in front of the x, that number is 6, half of it is 3, and we square it. 3 squared is 9. 9 is the number we put in the box. So both of the boxes will get the number 9. Notice the trinomial that I have in brackets. x squared plus 6x plus 9. That is a perfect square trinomial, meaning that the number at the end, 9, is half of the middle number squared. Half of 6 is 3, squared is 9. And when we have that pattern, that trinomial will factor into two identical binomials, as we can see on the right-hand side of the screen. That trinomial will factor into f of x equals x plus 3 times x plus 3, which is x plus 3 squared, and then I take the two numbers at the end, minus 2 and minus 9, combine them together, and I get minus 11. So the vertex form of the function is f of x equals x plus 3 squared minus 11. One thing I want to show you, you'll notice I didn't factor using the grid or any fancy techniques. In these problems, it will always be the case that half of the middle number, which was positive 3, is what is in the parentheses with the x. So half of the middle number was 3, so it was x plus 3 squared, and then minus 11. The second part of this problem says state the coordinates of the vertex. State whether the vertex is a maximum or a minimum. Let's take a look. Left 3 is given by the x plus 3. Down 11 is given by the minus 11. So if I were to construct a graph and move left 3 and down 11, 
I end up with a parabola down there in the third quadrant. Left 3 down 11 puts the vertex at the point negative 3, negative 11. I find it very useful to draw a sketch, and I encourage you to do that every time. Now this parabola will open upward. We know the parabola opens upward because we have a positive leading coefficient, positive x squared in the original. And so since the parabola opens upward, the vertex is a minimum. Now we made it through the first example, but I doubt you're feeling very good about it at this point. In fact, it'll probably take a few more examples for you to start feeling a little bit comfortable. Let's go through another example. Write the function in vertex form by completing the square so that we can see the shift left, right, up and down. Here's the function. f of x equals x squared plus 10x plus 3. And once again, we're going to write our function copying everything down but adding in the mystery boxes. f of x equals x squared plus 10x plus the mystery box. We always do the first two terms plus the mystery box. And then the last term plus 3 minus the mystery box. And we'll figure out in a moment what numbers go into the mystery box. But now let's put our brackets around the trinomial. And now let's figure out the number for the mystery box. Look at the number in the middle, 10. We want to take half of that. What is half of 10? 5. And now, to find the number for the boxes, we take that number 5 and we square it. What is 5 squared? 25. Put that number in both of the boxes. We're now ready to continue. Now, we simply have to write our function in vertex form. f of x equals, and now we have to factor the trinomial. We don't really have to do any difficult factoring because it follows the pattern of a perfect square trinomial where what's going in the parentheses is exactly the number that I took and had half of. So if I look here, plus 5 was the half of the middle number. This will be x plus 5 squared. Plus 3 minus 25 gives me minus 22. And now I have my function in vertex form. Part B. State the coordinates of the vertex. State whether the vertex is a maximum or a minimum. First, let's determine the shift. Let's look down at our function in vertex form. f of x equals x plus 5 squared minus 22. x plus 5 squared, well, the plus 5 tells me that I'm going left 5. It's the opposite of what you would think. The minus 22 on the outside means the parabola is shifting down 22. Go to the origin on the coordinate plane, go left 5 and down 22. That's where your parabola will be. Because the leading coefficient is positive, we know that the parabola will open upward. The coordinates of the vertex, left 5, down 22, so negative 5, negative 22. Because the parabola is opening upward, it's easy to see that that vertex is the lowest point on the graph, which means that the vertex is a minimum. Okay, we've made it through two examples now. How are you feeling? Is your head still spinning a little bit? That's okay if it is. That's perfectly normal. Let's look at another example. Write the function in vertex form by completing the square. f of x equals x squared plus 8x plus 20. The first thing I'd like for you to do is to write this down with the mystery boxes. So copy down, write the first step with the plus the box and the minus the box. Take a moment to do that right now. f of x equals x squared plus 8x plus the box plus 20 minus the box. Is that what you have? Perfect. Now put the brackets around the trinomial. 
Now, find the number that goes in the mystery boxes. Take half of the middle number, write it down, square it, and put that number in each of the boxes. We take half of 8, half of 8 is 4, 4 squared is 16. So in the boxes, the number that you have written down should be 16. Now, let's write this in vertex form. Go ahead and give it a try. We start with f of x equals. Now the half of the middle number was 4, so in the parentheses is x plus 4 squared. And then we do 20 minus 16, which is plus 4. Is that what you have? That's your function in vertex form. Part B. State the coordinates of the vertex. State whether the vertex is a maximum or a minimum. Go down to your function in vertex form, f of x equals x plus 4 squared plus 4, and write down the shift, left and right how many, up and down how many. x plus 4 tells me left 4, and the plus 4 on the outside tells me up 4. So this function shifted left 4 and up 4 from the origin. Now, draw a coordinate plane on your paper, it doesn't have to be fancy. Put your pencil at the origin, where the x and y axis intersect. Move left 4 and up 4. Draw the point of your vertex right there. This parabola has a positive leading coefficient, so it will be opening upward, so draw a little parabola. It should look like this. Now, write the coordinates, the location, of that vertex. Remember, we went left 4 and up 4. The coordinates are negative 4, comma, 4. Now I want you to ask yourself, is the vertex a maximum or a minimum? Here the vertex is the lowest point on the graph, therefore the vertex is a minimum. Now we're going to look at two more examples today. One more where we walk through it together, and then one example where you try it entirely on your own. I'm going to ask you first to take a look at this function here, f of x equals x squared minus 10x plus 2. I'd like for you to first rewrite this with the plus the mystery box and the minus mystery box. Then put the first three terms of the trinomial in the brackets and figure out the number that goes in the mystery box. Once you have figured out the number for the mystery box, come back and we'll compare our answers. Please pause the video here. Let's compare. We have f of x equals x squared minus 10x plus mystery box plus 2 minus the mystery box. We put the trinomial in the bracket. Now we needed to figure out the number that goes in the box. To do that, we take half of the middle number, so half of negative 10 is negative 5. Negative 5 squared is 25. So 25 is the number that goes in each box. Now that we've done that, let's see if you can write the function in vertex form. Please pause the video here and come back when you're ready to compare. Let's compare. f of x equals, now what goes in the parenthesis? Well, half of the middle was minus 5, so we have x minus 5 squared and then 2 minus 25 is minus 23. f of x equals x minus 5 squared minus 23. Next, let's see if you can state the coordinates of the vertex by drawing a little graph, a little grid, with an x and a y axis, determine the shift of the function, and see if you can figure out the coordinates of the vertex. 
please pause the video here and come back when you're ready to compare your answers. Let's compare. We have x minus 5 in the parenthesis, which means our vertex shifted right 5, minus 23 on the outside means we shifted down 23. Right 5, down 23 is right here on the graph, which will be the point 5 comma negative 23. Now the last question here is to state whether the vertex is a maximum or a minimum. Look at that turning point, that vertex. Is that a maximum or a minimum? That's right, the vertex is a minimum. It's the lowest point on the graph. Let's end today with one last example. Write the function in vertex form by completing the square. f of x equals x squared minus 16x plus 100. Here's what I'd like for you to do. I'd like for you to begin by rewriting this with the mystery boxes. Put the brackets around the first three terms of the trinomial and figure out the number that goes into the box. Once you've figured out that number, come on back and compare answers. Please pause the video here. Let's compare. f of x equals x squared minus 16x plus the mystery box plus 100 minus the mystery box. We have the red brackets around the trinomial and now we're ready to figure out the number that goes in the boxes. We take half of negative 16, which is negative 8, and square it to get 64. The number that goes in the boxes is 64. Now, see if you can write this function in vertex form. When you're ready to compare your answer, come on back. Please pause the video here. Let's compare. f of x equals x minus 8 squared plus 36. Half of the middle number was minus 8, so x minus 8 is what I have in my parenthesis, and 100 minus 64 is 36. Of course, you could factor the trinomial with the grid, and you'd end up with x minus 8 times x minus 8, which would give you the x minus 8 squared. I just showed you a nice little shortcut how to get there. Now, I'd like for you to identify the shift of the function left, right, up, down, determine the coordinates of the vertex, and state whether the vertex is a maximum or a minimum. Please pause the video here and come back when you're ready to compare your answer. Let's compare. x minus 8 in the parenthesis means we went right 8. Plus 36 on the outside means we shifted up 36. If we sketch an x and y axis and we go right 8 and up 36, we have our parabola up here. Because the leading coefficient, x squared, is positive, the parabola opens upward. The coordinates of the vertex are 8, 36. And because the vertex is the lowest point on the graph, we have a minimum. Well, now you've had a good amount of practice with completing the square, and hopefully you're starting to get the hang of things. If you need to go back and rewatch some of the examples, don't be afraid to do that. That can be very beneficial. Before we end for the day, I need to show you one last thing. When we completed the square so far, all of the numbers were integers. There were no fractions and no decimals to deal with. But that's not always the case. Take a look at one last exercise right here. f of x equals x squared plus 5x plus 4. And they ask us to write the function in vertex form by completing the square. And we're pretty excited because we know how to do that. We rewrite the function with the mystery box, plus the mystery box, and minus the mystery box, and we put those first three terms in, in the red brackets, and we feel really good. But then we take half of the middle number, and half of five is really two and a half, or five halves. And five halves squared is 25 fourths. You can see that this is a little less nice. The number in the boxes is 25 fourths. Not the end of the world, we can certainly deal with this. Now, we write this in vertex form. x plus 5 halves squared is in the parentheses. And then 4 minus 25 fourths is minus 9 fourths. So f of x equals x plus 5 halves squared 
minus 9 fourths. A problem like this would probably feel a little bit uncomfortable to you, but it's perfectly acceptable. And this tells us the shift from the origin. We went left 5 halves and down 9 fourths. And 5 halves is 2.5, 9 fourths is 2.25. So left 2.5 and, and down 2.25 gives me a vertex of negative 2.5 comma negative 2.25 or negative 5 halves comma negative 9 fourths. And of course, this vertex is a minimum because the leading coefficient is positive. I may not ask you to do problems frequently that end up with fractional values, but mathematically, you should be aware that it can happen and you should feel confident enough that you could persevere through a problem like that. And now, I encourage you to go and practice writing quadratic functions in vertex form by completing the square. You now know everything you need in order to get started.